All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, messenger just came bearing gifts. <laughs> so uh, I think these are just some nuts that we ordered off eBay. Uh, silicon bronze, half inch 13s. These are for our new stuffing box. Yeah, there they are. Cool. So these are, uh, what is it, 651, I think, is the alloy. And it's uh, silicon bronze. It's resistant to corrosion, salt water. Like if you just use copper, it just get eaten right up. Brass, uh, yellow brass, does not fare very well. So um, this is what you want to use if you're using it below the water line or anywhere where you could have corrosion problems so yeah I think it is yeah it's 651 is alloy so yeah that's nice to have uh, I had to buy 24 of them because it was cheaper than buying I don't know what did we need 16 I guess we needed 16 mm -hmm. and uh, and then I actually have a couple of extra bolts too so I kind of thought that we could use them and maybe uh, make a, a a glass plate from the fishtail for a big anode, mm -hmm. which is what we need to do over yep. there. So uh, that's what I'm going to use the extras on. And we also have a package from a viewer or a supporter, I guess, which is pretty cool. So um, didn't know about this or expect it, but it's from Jamestown um, from Eric. Little surprise. So, yeah. let's see what we got here. No way. Wow. Thank you, Eric N. I don't know if you want your name out there, but we certainly appreciate this and it's like wow yeah that's <laughs> this pretty is, neat this is really cool we were talking about one of these the other day what so is it? i'm just gonna hide his name here uh so it's an electric cutter for fiberglass i'm guessing oh yeah i've seen these before and um they work really good so oh <laughs> cool i think that's Holy the exact cow. one that i've oh. seen too with the, um, I guess it's like a carbon fiber handle, or at least it's made to look like one. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh, that, that is cool. That is oh, way cool. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Yeah, we've got a <laughs> lot neat. of cutting to do still, so this is really going to come in handy. Um, so it's for cutting cloth then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it slices right through it too. Nice. <laughs> and I think um, I'm pretty sure that you can replace the blades. So. That'll be nice, huh, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so very much. That is incredibly kind and unexpected. Um, we're just used to cutting away with the shears, and we actually splurged this year and got some some real shears. <laughs> These were our originals, some Fiskers. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't seem to find the size at Walmart anymore. They all, they only have the short ones. Uh, Yep. We had to upgrade to these, and these have actually been really nice. But I see other folks use these electric ones, and it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. It zips uh, right through. It just zips right through. That's yeah. nice. That's neat. So the boys are actually just cutting fiber right now for uh, another layup, and we've still got a few more panels to go. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much every layer in between all our panels still need to be cut and laid up. So we've got a fair amount. Pretty much everything up there and one more roll at home. Yep. Still. Let's but bust yeah, this thing open and check it that's out. That's so cool. Looks like they got some lubricant or oil on the scissors to probably the blade to protect them. Oh, it's got another. Oh, it's got a flat one. Oh, wow. For surfaces, I guess. Huh. That's nice. We'll have to clean these off real good. I'm excited mm -hmm. um, for you guys. I suppose we should go get it on the charger maybe. Yeah, I was going to ask. It's Let's battery, see huh? See if, if it needs charged. Yeah, it's rechargeable. All-purpose blade and a shoe blade. All-purpose blade will cut through all types of fabric and leather. 
Shoe blade is designed to cut out patterns and fabric. The blade rests on the table and provides stability when cutting around curves and notches. Cool. Neat. Well, thank you so much, Eric. That is incredibly kind of you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, That's thank awesome. you. <laughs> and this is like the gift that keeps on giving because uh, we never seem to run out of stuff to fiberglass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's a lot of it in our future. Even beyond this project, there's a yeah. lot in our future. We'll put it on the charger and test it out here in a bit. Yeah, I guess we'll just plug it in and see if it yep. needs to charge yeah. up. Yeah, wow, that is really cool. Um, I forgot to get all this in here. Nope, there's another little tiny box in here. Spares, maybe? Let's say a spare battery, possibly. Yeah. How cool. Wow. Mm. Good thing I checked, huh? <laughs> that is so nice. We have such nice people out there that really look out for us, guys. That's incredible. Cool little Looks charging like receptacle. A corded style, too. And then two battery packs. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Well, I'm excited to see that. I am, yeah. too. I'm going to go plug this in. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, once again, thank you, Eric. Yeah, thanks, Eric. We and appreciate it. Thank you to everybody else, too, that supports our channel. Um, we really do appreciate it. Folks that, that uh, contribute to our Patreon and, uh, and just viewing our, our videos and buying our seafood. We are very thankful. Yeah, a little note here from Eric. He says, folks, thanks for all the great YouTube videos. Sincerely, Eric N. Thank you very much, Eric. Yeah, yeah thanks. This is lining out a piece of CSN here. All right, we'll give this a try. Can you control the power? Can you control your excitement? <laughs> I don't know, I'm pretty excited. I know, me too. All right, here it goes. That is fast. That's pretty awesome. You know, you don't get that when you cut with the scissor and then you get the little jag. Yeah. You know, each time you reset, it's just Wait. nice and smooth and straight. Hold it like this. Uh -huh. Okay. Whatever's comfy, T. Don't bungle it. Go for it. Wow. That's smooth, huh? That's nice. Smooth yeah. That is cool. It'll be especially nice for that uh, reinforced fabric. Yeah. That stuff does, it gets a little tiring to cut after a while. It does. You want me to come from the other way? Let me go to the other side. So what's that take? Like five seconds compared to five minutes to cut Here, the piece? I'll, I'll show you with this <laughs> other cut. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. That was that wasn't me exaggerating either. Yeah. <laughs> it actually does take that long. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> and sometimes uh, with these, at least on the 90 or the 45, it'll like bend the fiber in the scissors because it spreads a little bit, and you have to like just cut it again, and it gets annoying. They might be getting a little bit dull yeah. now. Or I've sharpened them a few times, but. Yeah. You can only sharpen two faces of one side and the other side is serrated. So you either touch loose, but yeah, I know what you're saying. That's no good. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, wow. that's awesome. <laughs> well, 
Once again, thank you so much, Eric, and that's just incredible. Incredibly kind and generous, <laughs> and uh, just everybody that's supported our channel and mm -hmm. our Patreons and just everything. Everybody, thank you. Yep, yep. thank you so all. much. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. You might guess what time it is. Today has finally come. <laughs> the last bag of concrete is ready to go in. Yeah, exciting times. Yes. <clears throat> it seems like it's taken a while to get here, but the results are good, and we're happy with what we've done. Mm -hmm. So, rough calculation says it's... Uh, Roughly about 0.37 cubic foot, and a bag of concrete is supposed to be 0.45 cubic foot. So we'll see if one bag will do it. Should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So nothing real big for prep down there. I just marked a line to go off of that I want the level at. Put uh, duct tape there, just so it's easy to see and easy to clean off. I don't think that I really need to go up the side with plastic or anything. Nah, it shouldn't be too messy. I'm sure I'll make a big mess anyways, but yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I did, I took the uh, cold chisel and, and knocked a couple of chunks out of the the, uh, the edge, the bottom part of the, the new slab down there, kind of to key in this short little piece. Not really worried about it falling out or anything. It's gonna get the same treatment as the rest of it. Uh, about a quarter inch glass is going to go down on top of it. It's going to tie it into the hull. It's going to tie it into the stringers, into the rear bulkhead, and it's going to be done. Yeah. And uh, once we're happy with it, that it's dried out enough, we'll, we'll go ahead and throw down some some fiberglass over it and starting to get this area wrapped up. Still got some work to do, tie it into the stern tube and everything, um, build up some glass on that bulkhead there. But at least we can finally get this, this concrete down and that means we can start moving forward on everything else. All right, so we got our mixing station here. It's just a toting shovel today. Since you like toting the uh, wheelbarrow down for one bag of concrete. So. Yeah, this should do it. I think you get the idea. Bring you back once we're pouring this in. So let's do this. I'm just going to kind of agitate this in, try and get it underneath in here. I use the cold chisel to knock a couple of grooves in underneath, so it'll kind of key it a little bit. excited to get this buttoned up the rest of the way. So what's this? Is this number 18? 18. 18, 18 bags went in here. Yep. Total.
forward slant. Yep. <clears throat> Should be good. All right, well, we are going to let this start setting up and we'll come back later. This is all getting covered with fiberglass and it will not go anywhere when we're done. Once uh, enough moisture comes out of it, we'll get this glass laid down and we'll button this area up. We still have a fair amount of work to do. Um, build this area up here a little bit. I'm gonna come in with a piece of foam right here and then 45 it down and tie it in. That'll give us a, a nice split point. If and when we uh, work our way aft, we'll be replacing this bulkhead. And so that'll give us a, a start point. This other stuff will just get tore off, be sacrificial. Then we'll have a good layer on this side that's tabbed in and everything and ready to go. So we'll never ever be able to get back in here easily. So that's where we're at there. And things are coming along slowly but surely. Looks good. Probably should have got up here first. Well, maybe it was a little bit early. It's not going to hurt anything. Just give the resin a spot to key into it, I guess. I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave it alone. Yeah, I think it's good. So this is the footprint of our stuffing box. So we'll just put a little fillet of putty in there and then we'll get all this glassed up in a week or so, 10 days. What you got going on here, Dad? <laughs> well, I am in the middle of some fine woodworking right here. As you can see, some very high quality pine and I'm building the form out of it. Just a real rough form that will be uh, for the sumps. So our plan is to basically take this nasty looking wood Make an L-shaped form like this. I'm gonna get some Bondo and just fill in the cracks and the screw holes. Give it a quick sand. I planed this down. It was cut pretty bad, but uh, put a, a cut in the back side of it and then screwed it in, and that got rid of most of it. And then I just hit it with the planer pretty close it doesn't have to be perfect and uh, after we get the form made then probably just cover it with maybe some uh, just some tape and we'll cast up a couple of, of layers we'll laminate a couple layers of uh, oh probably like some 2408 on here and it'll create a form and then we can trim it 
for the width and the height of our sump and then we can uh, we can tab it into place and then when we go to fill the voids with foam we'll fill it almost to the top of where these will be and then we'll just cut some holes in here with a hole saw and just pour in the rest and allow that foam to expand and fill any remaining cavities it'll be able to come out the back side of this because there's a gap between um, where the form will be or the sump the sidewall of the sump and the concrete that's in the fish hold right now so that'll allow it to expand up and out and fill that void along the top and then we'll just come back in and we'll build it up pretty simple mm -hmm. good plan yeah so there's no reason to like lay this up to full thickness right now because when we tie in the old fish hold floor into the sump we're going to be overlapping it this way and also when we tab it in to the stringer we'll be overlapping it that way so that'll give us the build that we need in there without essentially doubling it so that's kind of the plan there I think if we put down like probably just like two layers or something it should be rigid enough that we shouldn't have to worry too much about foam expansion All right, folks so we have this lip on here now that's gonna allow us to attach this to the to the stringer to the shaft alley stringer it will give the bottom some rigidity so this edge is in all uh, whoop, 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 like this and have to try and figure out how to make it straight down there is going to be kind of tough without being able to get underneath it All right, just a rough sanding on that, and uh, there you go here. It's gonna lay down another layer of this. I'll get the rest of this all filleted out, and then, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty much ready to go. Um, probably just gonna cover this all with painter's tape. We're just making this very rudimentary, and painter's tape acts as a good release and it doesn't really affect the quality of the laminate any. Uh, there might be a little bit of res residue on the back side. We'll just wipe it down with acetone. It's gonna have foam up against it anyways, so it's really not important. Nothing fancy. Just a quick little form. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, you got some tape too. Ew. Look at him. Yeah, so we're going to get this covered. I need to, to jump down. I'm going to do the forward section. So I'm going to start right here at this wall and it'll come back into here somewhere. I got to just go grab a quick measurement and see where the uh, brace is that it's going to rest on. That's how long we'll make the first piece. Okay. I got the mold all taped up. Decided <laughs> to put some PVA uh, mold release on it. mold release. So this is what you'd want to use in a mold. Um, if you had a real nice mold. My tape is kind of my release, but this might help this tape from getting really sticky and nasty, which is, it will, if you, you just put resin on it. It will act as a release and keep it from sticking to another surface, but it also gets like really gooey and sticky. Uh, resin gets under little folds and breaks down the glue and yeah. it makes kind of a mess. So, figure so, a little extra barrier couldn't hurt. So we'll try this. Maybe this is the trick um, to seal it a little bit more. I don't think we've actually tried it before. So if anything, it'll be a good experiment. Right here. What? Little spot right there. Oh. There Quality that control, guy. he's always watching. Okay, like say we're not really that concerned about the finish of this it's the bottom of a sump. Am 
Alrighty, well, we'll see how that does. Drop. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, dry time on this uh, after the second coat is 30 to 60 minutes. So, put the second coat on and then see how it lays down. Fabric on it. All right, everyone. Got uh, Dad's mold all coated with PVA here. Just a couple of coats, light coat to start, and then a heavy coat. And I uh, got the pieces of fabric pre-cut and laid out inside in the dry, dry fit here. So uh, I guess we'll get laminating on it.
All right, folks. So we're about to unmold it, see how it goes. Hopefully it pops out okay. Yep. So yeah, um, I don't know what's gonna happen with this thing. It might be a battle. Meant to grab a couple of wedges for plastic ones from Chainsaw, but forgot them at home. So now we're just gonna have to well, I guess we can make a couple out of wood or something if we need to, but Matt was picking at this earlier and he thought that it was going to come apart. Okay. Oh, yeah. Look at that. It should pop right out of there. The challenging part will be where it's in the corners and over here, but uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a positive sign right there. So I guess we'll get geared up here and uh, get ready to to pop this out. I'm excited to get it trimmed up and get it in its home and see how it looks. I'm quite excited about that. biggest thing is going to be getting it out of these corners. <laughs> because I gave this mold absolutely no draft, no angle to allow it to come out. <laughs> Okay, crank on it. Yeah, let me do that again. There we go. Uh -huh. nice. Taking some tape with it. Oh well. Yep, tape was cheap. Uh, gonna have to, there you go, just come in. Uh, Ruining our nice tape job. I should yeah, have wrapped that, huh? I should have wrapped that tape. It doesn't matter, not anyways. Yep, it's okay. The mold was the hard part. I think that tape should get for like half an hour or something to apply. So. Half hour? I think like 10 minutes of that. Oh. Well, there you go. The PVA. Tape off. Yeah, the, the tape is um, a lot more sticky than one would think. There, there go. she goes. Mind over matter. There it is. Like we're gonna win this round, Matt. Yep. Oh. Right. For the win. Nice. Ah. All right.
right. Good thing we didn't use the strong tape. <laughs> yeah. Boom. There it is, folks. Awesome. Yeah, this is a PVA right here. Just creates a nice thin layer and wow, stuff that that actually really did make a big difference on that tape. Like this stuff would be just gross. Yeah, I guess melting gooey kind of like if you have an old piece of oily uh, electrical tape. Like, yeah. yeah, it's pretty nasty like That's that. That's pretty much exactly what it's like. Sweet. Well, the form's in good shape still, so. Yeah, fresh uh, layer of tape and a couple of slap-ons of PVA. So yeah. the next one, will we needed to retape it anyways because we're gonna need to pull the form from this side. Uh, we'll get a measurement. We might be able to go a little bit shorter back there, but not much. There's a, a taper to uh, our floor in relation to the sump. So it's deeper at the front, shallower at the aft end here. But this is the first part, is just to get this, and we'll just trim off any excess. Let's go see how it fits, yeah? yeah.